folks. Here we are for another episode of Off the Grid. Hey, my yeah, next yeah, guest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, my next guest is an elite MC who bears roots from the Bay Area. He came up on the scene and earned his stripes as a ferocious freestyle battle MC. Born to a Filipino father from Cali and a Sicilian mother from New York. In music circles, they call him the spokesman for the new breed of human in this generation. He's a seasoned veteran who has performed all over the world, including tours in the U.S., Europe, and Japan. And I've been waiting to use this title, man, to sum it up, dude. This man is your rapper's favorite rapper. Welcome, my brother, Mestizo. Hey, hey thank hey, you for hey, doing hey. this session with me. Como esta cara, pare? Yeah, ah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, I know it's February, but Happy New Year. <laughs> happy New Year. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man, how, how was the holidays? Good? Holidays were chaotic as always, bro. My life is chaos, pure chaos. Did you get, you still in Florida? Did you guys stay in Florida? Yeah. Okay. I'm out in Southside St. Pete, man. Out in Florida right now, but, you know, making my way back to Cali pretty soon. Well, I got to give you credit, man. Uh, the podcast that you invited me on kind of sparked my inspiration to do one. And so, just oh, like, hell yeah. I know, okay. dude. Hey, I didn't think I'd enjoy it that much, but thank you, man, for being that right. fine. Yeah. Absolutely, well, hey, man. Yeah. Hey, man. Well, before we go into your storied resume, man, I wanted to take it back to the start real quick and mm -hmm. just wanted to talk about uh, your background. So if you could, man, could you just tell us where exactly you were born and where in the U.S. you call exactly home? So I was born in uh, Sanjo, bro, on West Side San Jose, uh, Bay Area. And I was raised all over the Bay when I was a kid, but I call L.A. my home, man, because L.A. raised me to be a man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a Bay to L.A. kind of dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oakland, Oakland gave me my game, man. East Oakland <laughs> gave me my game. Hey, well, when did you call? When, uh, I'm sorry. When did you leave California? Was it uh, when you were a teenager? Nah, I left Cali when it was like uh, 2012, something like that. And uh -oh. I moved to... Yeah. Yeah, I moved to Philadelphia um, to start my family and all that, have my kids. And then we decided after COVID, when all that shit went down, it was like, we needed some space, you know? In Philly, yeah. you don't get no, it's not like Cali, you don't get front yards, you don't get backyards, yeah. none of that shit. There ain't no space, so you stuck, you know? So we moved down to Florida and, and just to have some space. And St. Pete was crazy. It's a, Nobody's ever heard of this town, but it's popping. It's like, it's cool as fuck out here, you know? Nice. Well, hey, man, so starting in the Bay Area, I know you got, uh, there's a lot of uh, music that you listen to that I really enjoy, but what kind of music uh, were your parents bumping in that Filipino-Italian household, man? What were you exposed to at first? You know how Filipino dads are from the 70s, bro. They <laughs> listen to, like, fucking Journey, and they listen to, like, rock, all rock. My mom was a soul, my mom loved soul, and she loved blues, you know? So that was what I was raised with at the time. So basically, like you know, Otis Redding and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, and so, what about rap, man? What was your first introduction to rap, then? So my big sister is uh, she's seven years older than me, and she introduced me to Too Short. Too Short's the first rap I ever heard in my life, and that was in the eighties. Too Short. Uh, there's a group called Four One Five. Richie Rich, who was down with uh, uh, Tupac and all them. Four One Five was huge in the Bay back when I was a kid. There's a song called The Sideshow, and uh, yeah. So Too Short, Four One Five, and uh, N.W.A. All the L.A. shit that was coming out in the '80s. That was that was my shit. You know, wow. West Coast rap for sure, but East Coast too. Cause Yo MTV Raps was like I gravitated towards that. That's all I listened to. MC Light was on there, KRS One, uh, Kumo D, all that kind of shit, you know. Yeah, and I think like Bay Area, that early Bay Area rap, they were really good at storytelling too. And I, and I oh, find that absolutely. style too. I find mm -hmm. you an amazing storyteller, man. Absolutely. I mean, my my influences are are definitely Bay Area as hell. Yeah. You know what I mean? The Bay, Mac Dre, E Forty, Too Short. Uh, RBL Posse, all that shit. That's that's my influence for sure. Yeah. And so it's really hard to pinpoint, uh, you know, uh, certain albums that you would label the best, but are, are there a couple that were fundamental in uh, in, in your musical journey? Which ones? That Absolutely. Oh, yeah, let's yeah. do it. Uh, Too Short, Born to Mac. Um, hmm. Mac Dre, Rompilation Compilation. Oh, shit. Uh, nice. 
you know, RBL Posse, the lesson to be learned shit. Um, Damn. San Quinn. Oh, um, man. Dre Dog, the new Jim Jones. That that one. Incredible. Brother Lynch Hung. Uh, oh, Season of the Sickness and 24 Deep and uh, X-Rated. Yeah. Uh, Psychoactive. Oh, yeah, all, all that old Northern Cali shit. That, that's that's yeah. what I grew up on. I didn't get into underground hip hop until I left California and shit. You know, like that's what I was raised on was that that gangster shit. You know. And so I know you do both. You rap and you produce. And what was it first? Was it rapping first or production first? It was both, man. Um, so I I was pretty. Uh, I was in solitude as a kid. You know, what I mean, my pops he he used to run with uh, Hell's Angels and shit like that. So. He was out all the time. My mom's worked all the time. So it was just me by myself. My sister was older. So all I did was I had a little keyboard and I make beats on it and then just freestyle to it. Cause all my homies from Oakland, like that's all we did, man. We'd have seven hour freestyle sessions of just shit. smoking weed and, and just spitting, bro. Hardest, hardest like hood shit you could hear, you know? Yeah, and so, uh, and you eventually upgraded, man. So were your parents pretty supportive of you rapping and, and producing, or was it uh, you have to just kind of hustle and get your own own equipment at the start? So my, my pops was pretty supportive. I mean, my mom, she wasn't, if, like I said, man, I was pretty alone, and yeah. uh, my pops was out of the picture, and then I got kicked out of the house at 14, and I was homeless with my pops, and... All I wanted to do was write raps. I had a notepad, my CD player, and that was it, man. So I just wrote raps, and my pops was always hella supportive of it. You know, I was out the house at 15 on my own, so I was just freestyling at local clubs, and, and nice. we ended up in uh, Phoenix, Arizona when we left Oakland. And that's where I met Stevie Weeby, uh, Kwang Wu, and, yep. you know, it took off from there. He introduced me to a lot of the hip-hop shit. Nice, man. And mm -hmm. so rap, I know uh, you mentioned a lot of Bay Area uh, musicians, but what about producers, man? Who who are you kind of digging at the time? Producer-wise, I mean, of course, Dangerous Crew. Anything that Too Short was doing, uh -huh. that was my shit, man. Uh -huh. Too Short, uh, Dr. Dre, of course. Yeah. Uh, Mugs, DJ Mugs. Like, the yeah. Cypress Hill shit was my shit, too. You know, like, you know how it is growing up in Cali. It's like we had so many different influences and styles that like uh there's not really one i can pinpoint that i think is better than the other yep but definitely dr dre and dj mugs my biggest influences man yeah and so what are you using now to make beats right now just ableton i was using uh i mean i i started out on an mpc okay um then i moved to pro tools and acid and and now i'm using ableton basically in uh logic too so Hey, for, for rapping, man, do you prefer to write with a beat or can you got some times where you don't want to write with a beat? That's a good question. Um, so when I first started out, I would write with no beat at all. And then I started writing to the beats as I got better beats from like, you know, Mediogre or yeah. whoever, you know, the Galapagos dudes, the Makina dudes. Um, but now I'm back in that phase where I'm just writing with no beat again. Oh, great. You know? Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, it's crazy, mm -hmm. too, like your delivery, man. So, oh, man. So it's not very hard to fit after you write into the beat, man. I mean, your delivery's yeah. amazing. Thank yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. So is yeah. yours, brother. Oh, shoot. But the double, triple time, I'm like, damn. Ah. Oh, shit. Hey, it's practice, man. I mean, I'm I'm no rifle man. You know what I mean? Rifle man, L.A. Cool, he's the, he's the man for that shit. Yeah. Well, hey, man, this is something I, I like to always ask guests, man. So I, I know what your name means, but how did you end up choosing your MC name, Mestizo? Was that the first name that you used and you stuck with it, or did you go through a... Uh, nah. So initially, I used Yoda for one, because when I was a kid, my ears were all big, and my uncles, all my titos used to call me Yoda. Oh, shit. So I started out with that, and that's what I was battling after, but then as I got older... Like, maybe around 16, I was like, nah, I'm going to go by Mestizo because that's what I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. It embodies who I am and what I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm mixed. Oh, that's just what it is. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was like rap names, man. That's one of the coolest names I've heard, dude. So that's awesome. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised uh, 
Yeah, just the, the the way you spell it. I like it. And then your logo, man. Did you do the script logo uh, that you have on the shirt? No, nah, that's my boy AJ, man. Carlos Clean Sleep from uh, from Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my shouts to AJ. Yeah, he 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 gifted me that, and uh, you know I got a bunch of homies that always support. So shouts to all those homies. Nah, for sure, man. Super dope shirt, man. And so now I want to jump to the uh, the music, man. So you know, when I did homework, I wanted to go back and just uh, and trace your discog, man. And f- funny enough, man, on Spotify, man, there's uh, there's another mestizo that tagged onto your name. Do you see that? So, yo, 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 let me clarify real quick. <laughs> I'm the first mestizo. That's right. I'm the first. And after that, like maybe 10 years later, a genre of like South American music came out called mestizo. Oh. So now there's a ton of mestizo uh, stuff out there. Shouts to my South American homeboys. Yeah. But like, yeah. I'm the first. It was not a, another mestizo before me. Hundred percent, man. There was a uh, on on your album uh, disc, all your Spotify albums. There's this uh, Mexican mariachi album that's tagged to it. Obviously, it's not yours, but uh, reeking <laughs> reeking off the mestizo playlist, man. Hey, I dived into the uh, 2004 album Life Like a Movie. That was your first solo with Galapagos Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life Life Like Movie came out. Uh... So I was living in Phoenix at the time, and I, I was throwing shows when I was like 17. Mm. And so I brought out uh, Quell, and I brought out Off-White, who's also another Pinoy MC, man. And uh, and that's why I found him. I was like, oh, he's Pinoy. And he was raw as fuck. They're all from mm. Chicago. So yeah. I brought him out, brought him out for a show, and uh, the producer, Mediogre, which is one of my best homies to date, uh, me and him clicked. And we just kept in touch. And I had ended up moving to Vegas with my moms. And I was like, I, I'm not feeling Vegas. And media was like, why don't you move out to Chicago? So I moved out to Chicago. Crazy. Long, yeah, long story short, they were doing shows and I was hosting. And okay. then I was also freestyling. So the owner of the label, Jeff, was like, hey, man, would you want to put a record out? And I was like, I, I never pushed for that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not like. I don't try to, I don't crave attention. So he was like, you want to put a record out? And I was like, for sure, man. I got all these raps from when I was like 15, 16, 17. And that's how Life Like Movie came about. So it was Mm. through the the shows that you were throwing and then just uh, mutual relationships and they invited you. Yeah. Oh. I always enjoyed throwing shows, man. Like uh, throwing yeah. shows for me was very fun because I get to introduce people to new music. Like I, you know, I threw shapeshifter shows, uh, all sorts of shows when I was a kid, man. Because I just wanted to get the new acts that I respected exposure, even if they didn't have it, you know. And what was the <clears throat> what was the premise behind the album, man? How did that come about? Was that album already something you were working on before G Four invited you to do that? Or well, was... I had a lot of that shit written from yeah. when I was like 16, 17. And uh, the way it came about was just like, my life's been like a movie, you know? It's uh, It's been crazy and epic, ups and downs, and there's climaxes, and it, it just goes downhill and it goes uphill. You know what I mean? It's just, that's how life is. So life like movie, man. Movies emulate life a lot of the time. So that's just what it was, you know? Yeah, and first track off the bat previews, and then you had that line, activist, mm-hmm. artist, brother, warrior, Pisces, like, yeah. like movie, Mestizo 2004, big ah. things to happen, Galapagos mm-hmm. 444, oh, man. That's it, bro. Uh, man. I appreciate you, man. You know all this stuff. I appreciate you, man. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. No better way to start that album, man. And so who, who put the uh, idea in your head about the cover? I love the, uh, just the oh. chest. So I was actually working at a movie theater during that time, oh, man. Yeah, wow. so I was at that actual outfit was my uh, movie theater outfit because, like, up until I was, like, 21, I was like, man, the my favorite place to work was a movie theater. So I always had a hustle, and I always had a job because that's what my pops taught me. Yep. And so I was working at the movie theater, and she came – Meaty's ex-wife, his baby moms came through and and shot the cover for me, man, while I was working. Yeah, so on the name tag, you had Mestizo also? Oh, yeah, my boss did that for me. (laughs) That was real. Yeah, that was real. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) 
I love it, man. Well, hey, man, that album had a lot of amazing tracks that I love. And I told you even like months ago that uh, I See Through You was one of my favorite joints. Dude, I wrote that when I was really young. Like, I wrote oh. that when I was super young. 15, probably, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, hard as, hard as hell, man. The uh, flutes. Did you produce that or somebody else did? No, that was Mediogre. That's a Mediogre oh. beat. Yeah, yeah. He's Medi great. did a lot of the alpha stuff. The new yeah, stuff. So, whew, just uh, track after track, man. Epi Shelaton with Riff Nate Palm. Oh, uh, yeah. Still Riff. His name's Still Riff now. He just put out a record with uh, Open Mic and Video Day. Jesus. Yeah, Night Seppuku, man. Just a uh, heartbeat, heart lyrics. Ah, I appreciate it, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so what was going through your mind when you finished the album? Was it just, uh, were you just still like, oh, here's my first project and let it go? Or was there a lot of pressure when they asked you to put the project out? No, not at all. Because um, I was still <clears throat> doing music and I, I, uh, I took all those guys on their first tour. I showed them how to tour because... On the West Coast, you know, we we learned how to tour independently pretty early. And especially Merce was like one of my my earliest mentors. And oh, and man. all them living legends dudes taught us how to tour properly. So we just started booking our own shit, you know, and made it happen. Ooh, that is wild, man. And so uh with Galapagos 4, uh, is that where your Japan and Europe trips happened, or was that outside of G? No, nah, um, so Japan, ha yeah, all the Europe stuff was with G4. Japan was me and Mike Gao. Oh, shit. And uh, that got set up through, I think they're called Giant Panda. Okay. Golden Panda, Japanese group. They were pretty big, <clears throat> like, independently back in the day, but the homie, like, put me up on uh, one of the promoters out there, and then we spent a month out, month out there, and it was cool, man. Japan's a shit. Oh, yeah, they, uh, which is uh, a great segue into the album that you did with Mike Gao in 2005, mm. Blind Faith, which is mm. also another gem in my collection, man. But how, how did that connection happen? So did he heard the first album and wanted to work with you or vice versa? No, nah, so um, I'm the kind of dude that, like, if I see talent, it doesn't matter where you're at. If you're, you know, in a high place or a low place, if I think yeah. you're dope, man, I'll fuck with you. You know what I mean? I'm not one of those people that's like brushes off people in my messages that are like, hey, man, I want to work with you. So I'll listen to the music or whatever yep. and work if we're going to work. But with my gal, I heard him when he was, I think he was 17 at the time and nobody was fucking with him in L.A. And I was like, hey, let's just rock a record out, man. You got dope beats. So we we decided to make Blind Faith. I recorded that all in Frisco and the rest was history, man. That Pick Up yeah. 52s is my biggest song. Dude, those are two things I want to ask you about, was that uh, from your first song to that next album, uh, again, I mentioned the double time delivery, and then just the way that you had inflections on your words. Like, I thought you leveled up big time. The Red and Rising track was, I was like, uh, God damn, the dude leveled up like times a thousand, man. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've always been working on my craft, man. I've always written poetry and, and been very coded in my language. So, uh I definitely leveled up on that record, man. It was different because I, you know, hanging around Quell and all these, uh, oh, these, shit. these fucking Chicago MCs that are just amazing. I was like, oh shit, I gotta step it up because you know, on the West Coast, we're amazing at experimental. On in Chicago, they're really good at being clean and direct. Oh. You know, like their style is completely different. So I picked up a bunch of that when I was in Chicago, man. Shots of Chicago. Ooh, did yeah. you guys live together or uh, everybody had their own spot? Nah, me and Mediogre lived together and Dennis and Kane lived uh, below us. Dennis and Kane from Typical Cats. Oh yeah. my God, yeah. Yeah, that's my boy, man. I fuck with Dennis and Heavy. Yeah, is he still back in Chicago? Where's he at now? Nah, he's been living in Oakland for like 25 years probably at this point. Oh, oh man. Well, hey, you mentioned the uh, Pick Up 52s, man. Not everybody can say that they've had a song that has had over a million plays. Mm. And so, yeah, is that wild just to think that your song has been blasted that many times and it continues to go up, man? Yeah, I mean, 2.5 million, it's, uh, it's pretty... I mean, I'm happy and I'm proud of myself, but, like, <clears throat> you know, I'll be honest, that was, like, the song that I least liked on that record, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. I love that song. I love it, but it's not my favorite song on the record. You know what I'm saying? No. And Blind Faith, that was the album that just got repressed, right? Yeah. 
So uh, the homie Rico from Europe, he pressed up the record. Uh, yeah, it's a, there's some copies left. There's a few left. Yeah. Oh, I, I have the OG copy too, man. So <laughs> that's what's up. Hell yeah. Yeah, well, I, that album too was another favorite of mine. And then Brother Luck and Native Soil, Whose Land, those are my favorite tracks from that album. So Brother Luck is about my homeboy, Brother Luck, who's a famous chef. Uh, he he's out of Colorado right now, but he's actually from the town. He's from Oakland. He's my boy that I grew up with. And he was on top chef twice, almost beat. Uh, he got second runner up. He beat Bobby Flay. Oh. Brother Luck is my boy, man. I got like, my heart is with that dude. So I, I wrote that song and just named it after him. Oh, know? that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Man, album after album, man. And so you went on to do a lot of stuff. 2000 album, you, 2007, you, re you released Dream State. And again, yeah. just, yeah, a lot of major players on that album, man. Uh, your network uh, was very solid. Merz, Quell, Two Max, they featured in that. And that was another Galapagos 4 album, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, that was my last Galapagos album, man, because I had decided I was going to do something different, start my yep. own label and all that kind of shit. You know? Yeah, very cool, man. And so uh, with that, I'm going to fast forward a little bit, man. And so, man, I just really, I've been really impressed with all the new stuff you've been coming out. Uh, oh, with. thank you, man. Golly, man, just uh, very different and just uh, really progressive, man. And I wanted to really shout out your uh, album with Dose One in 2017, mm. Alpha Work, man. The first really, one? Yeah, all, all yeah. of it's dope. But how did that connection happen? So that connection happened to uh, my boy Cadillac, man, rest in peace. Uh, Caddy was fucking with Dose first. I've known Dose in jail since I was... 15 battling they played a show and i battled at the show and then we just kind of hit it off right there but then i saw dose a bunch like when i came out of my whole like gangster rap era from cali yeah i got introduced to dose one and dose one was like for me mind-blowing man him and company flow i was just like oh my god what the fuck i've never heard words like this put together like this so Basically, Alpha got introduced to Caddy, but we did a track on one of my EPs, okay. and then it turned out that we just like enjoyed hearing each other together, and and that was that, man. We just been making raps together for a while. Yeah, so it took that long for you guys to connect, and you got did you spend some time at Scribble Jam too? Uh, did you get yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah? I've been there a few times. Yeah, uh, man. Did, did you get to perform or freestyle out there or just yeah yeah i performed uh we performed right before boot camp clip oh damn no, yeah. no big deal man holy cow yeah i kind of felt like uh uh because i saw drew high and all these dudes in the elevator and i felt like they were like kind of like mocking us a little bit you know what i'm saying but uh -huh. i was like whatever it's drew high man it's cool and then uh they, did they get to see you guys rip yeah, yeah, they were yeah. out there listening to us. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I, you know, I regret never uh, being able to make it out there, but uh, it was uh, it was pretty incredible, man. It was unique for its time, you know. A lot of people, Dose yeah. battled them and them there, and uh, there's a lot of people that that participated in that that were legendary, you know. Yeah, and so uh, yeah, and it's great, man. The Alpha stuff is, has been awesome. You guys did the uh, two, the second Alpha album uh, about two years ago. And then yeah. you just released the uh, Many Headed EP, man. Tell me, tell me how mm. that came about. The Many Headed EP, I can't remember. I was in Santa Fe, and me and Dose re recorded one of the King Me tracks, and uh, then it just came about that we were going to do a posse cut. Meaty had a dope beat for it, and uh, you know, we started reaching out to people. Originally, Billy Woods was going to be on it, but the dude was just so busy. Um, okay. So, you know, we got Buck 65, which is probably one of my favorite of all time. Uh, yeah. Self Jupiter from Freestyle Fellowship, Aesop Rock, you know, myself and uh, Dose One. Oh, man, that was crazy. Yeah, that, that track was pretty awesome, man. Yeah. So, who, who's kind of the, uh, the orchestrator of that, of that group, man? Who, who's really kind of designing the, uh, you know, the lead on that album? Or those albums so we know. we just get beats from cats uh rest in peace alias because alias was one of our first producers scumbag yeah. tony 
basic scumbag Tony from Crime Kills, which is Nate No Face's group. Uh, he gave us the first beats, um, but he never finished them. So we had Alias finish them, and it oh. just turned out incredible. And then the second one, I brought Media into the circle, Mediogre, and then Gel from Manticon came through. And we just kind of put it together together, man. Me, uh, Dose takes a hold of all the choruses, and I, I take the hold of uh, just the vibe, you know? Yeah. And who does, who's been doing the art for you, uh, for you guys? Do you, do you do art in general or? Nah, this dude, um, Brady's been doing our art. Joaquin is dead on Instagram and he's been doing most of the art for us. So, but my boy, Zach Caston, who owns Hands Made, which is the record label that, that we're on and puts out all my shit from here on out and all the alpha stuff yeah. and dose of stuff. Uh, Zach Caston, he's our video guy, man. He's, he's just an incredible videographer, man. Like, the dude has an eye and a passion for art. So, shouts to yeah. Zach, man. Well, I'm probably going to butcher the name of your album that you released in March last year. So, it's the I-W-W-I-W. Um, mm. What's the correct way to pronounce, pronounce that? Uh, I know it, it, was, it was what it was, bro. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, Rainbow is my joint, man. Holy cow. That is, that is one of my favorite Mestizo tracks of all time. That's a special track for me because that was about my homeboy, one of my best friends that uh, committed suicide for, uh, during COVID. And he was just such a good guy, man. And and that whole, that song is true. Like everything I'm saying in it is true. You know, it's like I went to his funeral. I was about to see his open casket and I bounced because I just, yeah. I didn't want to, I didn't want to see him like that, you know, for the last time. So... Yeah, it was a beautiful tribute for sure, <clears throat> and, and just mm. an album again too. I just love the uh, the packaging was the uh, old school VHS plastic cassette tape style. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was man. great. Man. That's that's all Zach from Hands Made, man. He's a visionary. Yeah, and the art too. Who did the uh, the side profile of you for that album? Oh, so my son took that picture, and uh, my seven year old took that picture. He's a creative man, amazing creative, and. Uh, Zach sent it down to these portrait painters in Mexico and they painted that picture of me and, and sent it back. And that's what we use for the cover. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. So what, what do you, uh, what, what do you got cooking now? Any special projects that you want to talk to us or share us about? I'm working on too much shit right now, bro. Just like, yeah, I'm honestly like what I've been trying to do is uh, balance out my life so I can make space for what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? And right now my life is chaotic. So I'm balancing out that chaos to move forward. But right now I got like a new wave VP in the works. My third installment to that, it was what it was. Yeah. Um, that shit is uh, uh, coming. And I'm also, I've been working on so much shit, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm all over the place right now. You know, oh, I, that's how that's kind of how I work. I'm like, start here, have like 75 percent done of five projects, and then I'll pick which one I want to finish up and dedicate my time to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, I, I love it, man. And what, you know, whatever comes out next, I'm always just mind blown. So, um, man, it, appreciate it. Same, bro. Same. You've been working hard as shit, man. I'm trying to catch up, man. Nah, so, <laughs> stop it, bro. <laughs> hey, with that too, man, like um, I, I saw a little clip that you posted on Instagram on your philosophy about freestyling. And ah, so, yeah. Oh, man, I 100% I agree with you, man. I know like in certain circles, they're defined as verses you don't use and you save them for later. Yeah. And then, and then some some circles uh, define it as off the top, man. And nah, so, me, and you, me and you are from the West Coast, bro. Freestyle is freestyle. It's off the yeah. top of the head. That's what it is. If you yeah. suck a freestyle, you brush it up in the cypher. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm ne I've am i never been with that whole, like, spit a written in a cypher. We all know you spitting a written. That's right. That's Point, right. bro. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And I've always been diplomatic when I answer that question, right? But when you were when you were explaining your reasoning, I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. He's fucking right, man. Yeah. Freestyle's off the top of the head, bro. I don't care what nobody says. That whole East Coast freestyle shit, I hated that shit. Yeah. Like, you're not freestyling. We're from the West Coast, bro. We come off the top of the head. And if you're coming whack, that just means you need to brush up on your skills. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
Oh man, yeah. And I was like, man, that's refreshing to hear, man. Cause uh usually I'm like, ah, eh, either way, it's cool. And then you're like, nah, it's off the top. Nah. Like, Fuck nah. yeah, dude. I mean, uh, it sounds dope. Like I understand yeah. why they come with riddance and spit it out like a radio station. But if yeah. you're in a cipher, yeah. if you're in a cipher with me, you better be coming yeah. freestyle, man, because I'm gonna come at you. Yeah. <laughs> right, dude. Hey, how often do you get to practice these days, man? I mean, I practice every day, bro. I'm like on my way to work. I practice. I just try to keep my tool sharp, man. Yeah. You never know. You know what I'm saying? That's you right. never know. That's right, man. Good point, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, so with that, too, I, I also have to shout out your merch game, man. Again, I love the Headhunter design. Oh, yeah. Who, who, who did that? That's a old picture of a Kalinga tribesman, man. And yeah. uh, so, you know, I don't know. Where's your family from in the Philippines? Uh, Cavite, so I know you guys Cavite. are way up north, right? Yeah. yeah, we're north. So my family's from Cagayan Valley and oh. uh, and Kalinga. So, you know, in Kalinga and Cagayan Valley, that's where all the headhunters were. So I'm yeah. I'm two generations removed from the headhunters. So I, I just kind of like, I like representing my people, man, because we're underrepresented in culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of fools don't know what I am, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm Pinoy. That's what I am. You know what I'm saying? No, oh, and I love the the tattoo. Did you just get the neck tattoo? Yeah, so this is uh this is also oh. from our tribe. These markings are from our tribe. You know, the snake skin represents protection, the praying yeah. house is for praying to God, and the black and white is for dark and night, man, the duality, life and death. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, I love it, man. And I love how um how you represent uh, our culture well, man. And so I'm I'm glad that we get to claim you as a Filipino MC, bro. <laughs> I have to, bro. I have yeah, to. I'm Pinoy, man. I can't be nothing else, you know? <laughs> well, hey, man, have you, uh, aside from uh, aside from uh, rapping and producing, did you dabble into any other element of hip-hop? Or was it just... Uh, yeah, so I b-boyed for a while. Okay. I love b-boying. Like, I love dancing. I love dancing. I was never a good b-boy, but my up rock is solid. You know what I mean? I just love the <laughs> style of yeah. hip-hop. And I also, I could cut and I can mix records and stuff, <clears throat> man. I, I, I dabbled in DJing, but nothing like, you know, the fucking OG, like uh, Tito D Styles, man. Like, <laughs> D Styles is a man, bro. Hell yeah. Hey, so, and so your kids are of age to where they can appreciate what you do in terms of music. Mm -hmm. Do you have. Uh, <clears throat> do you see any of that uh, music influence rubbing off on your kids? And Absolutely, bro. My uh, nine year old, uh, so he's a skater, man, and he he skates like the bowls and he's he's big, he does big shit and he's really, really good. But what he does for money is he'll go down to the beach and he'll sing karaoke for tips. Oh, shit. so like, dude, most of the time he's pulling away with a hundred bucks, man. The dude's got he's got it, he's got the creative bug, you know. Oh, that's awesome, man. <clears throat> yeah, and I love I love the work that you do as a dad too. And I know that you guys have quite an aggressive schedule in terms of wrestling and jujitsu. And so you mm -hmm. got to train to self defense. How, how's that coming along? <clears throat> it's good, man. I mean, we I did jujitsu for years, and I love jujitsu. But uh, I went back to boxing. My whole family's boxers, so I got my kids into boxing. And the culture is much different. You know what I mean? It's a it's a bunch of kids that come from what I come from, and and they're all really humble. So we uh, we've been focusing on boxing mainly. Man, that's awesome, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's fun, man. I just love you know just following you guys and just uh, seeing the awesome things that you guys are doing out there in Florida. And so I know you just uh, you took a recent trip out to the Bay Area too, man. Well, what fuel yeah. that visit to the Bay? Well, so my grandmother turned um, 90, my Lola. She turned 90, and uh, she lives in Vallejo. So I was like, all right, I'm going to come out and see her. Oh. I, haven't been, I haven't been back to the Bay, and then I went to L.A. after that, but I haven't been back there since before COVID, man. So wow. it was very, very nice to be out in the Bay, and I got to see my boy Zach from Oakland and, and all that, you know? Yeah, I saw you made it out to L.A., and I heard you guys mm -hmm. uh, tease the track that you, you have something with Gel Rock in the works, too, right? Oh, uh, yeah, so that's my probably one of, my favorite, one of my favorite tracks that I've ever done, and that's oh, coming out God. soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's called Vibes, and uh, Gel Rock, you know, Gel Rock's a man, bro. He's an OG of L.A., and uh, the man is just so talented, bro. Very, very talented, man. Did, did you guys shoot a video for that, too, or...? We did, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. 
So Zach, our video, uh, our video guy for Hands Made, and he's also he runs the label and he puts in all the legwork. He did the video, came all the way down to LA just to hang out, you know. So it was cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, and so in music these days, man, do you find yourself uh, rhyming or producing more? Do you have one that you prefer mm. over the other? No, I really don't, man. I love both, to be honest. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm a writer. First and yeah. foremost, I'm a writer, you know. And uh, I love producing because I can produce the things that I think I sound best on. You know what I'm saying? So. Like, there's a lot of times where producers will give me beats, and I'm like, oh, man, that's just not me. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I, I love writing still. I've been writing nonstop, but as far as, like, music, I, I've been out of it for the past month. I've just been, sometimes you need to take a break and step away from your creative art, you know what I'm saying, yeah. just to overanalyze it. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Yeah, <clears throat> I like your steady increase of video content, too. So the stuff that you're doing there, is that you, all you? Uh, the shit I posted today was me edited. The shit from Sheesh. Hard to Maintain. The Hard to Maintain video was done by my boy, Doug C, who uh, he did a lot. Like, when I was working for Fresh Drive, if nobody knows this, uh, Tyler, the creator, and all those guys were under me. They were my interns at, at Fresh Drive on Fairfax. Oh, and, God. uh and Doug C used to, you know, come and shoot video for Earl and all them guys, Mellow Hype and all all the our future kids. So me and him, it, he's a homie. He's an underground head. And he was just like, yo, let me shoot this video for you. I was like, it's going to be boring as fuck because we're going to do it in one room. And he made it he made it look really good. man. Jesus Christ, man. And I'm so happy to see folks that I was fans of. Uh, in the early 90s are still doing their thing. And so really what, what I'm interested in is how do you find the motivation to still create and do music? Oh, bro. <laughs> uh, probably because it's it's my life's work, man. I just like I just talked to somebody about this and I was alone a lot as a kid. And all I had was my Casio keyboard. So I, you know, when I would hang out with my homies from Oakland, they, they were all freestylers, just beasts at freestyle <clears throat> hood shit. But they, you know, I, I would make beats and then I would just start to make my songs. And it's been a passion ever since then. It's been a gift and a curse, but it's been a passion ever since then. And I, you know, I just can't not write. It's so ingrained in me and, and it's a part of me. You know what I'm saying? Like I have to, have to, have to write at least, and at least freestyle, you know? If I hear a, a, somebody that I respect on the mic, I want to outdo them out of respect. You know what I'm saying? Love, it keeps me. That shit gives. That shit keep, gives me fire, man. Yeah. I mean, there's a ton of cats out there now. Like the the music, the music scene is so oversaturated. Yep. That it's like you got to stand out in certain ways, but also I'm such a cynical cat that I, I just don't like faking the funk. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so <clears throat> and so with that, I mean, you've seen. I mean, just in the decades and decades that you've been doing music. Uh, you're familiar that with hip hop, it, it, it has to evolve. And so, do you like some of the new stuff that's coming out? And if so, can you pinpoint just a couple artists that you're really digging? I mean, I'm fucking with uh, uh, the homie. Some dude put me up on Seafood Sam the other day. Seafood Sam is really Shut dope. Up, He's a West Coast okay. West Coast artist. Um, you know, Earl's new shit is really dope. I'm actually gaining an appreciation for him. I, I think I kind of had a bias because I looked at them dudes as little brothers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know Tyler has had some shit to say about that, but like uh Earl, um uh, Billy Woods is crushing it, all them the backwoods guys are killing it. Uh yeah. Fat Boy Sharif. Uh man, there's just there's so much music out there, you know? It's uh, it's hard to pinpoint, but those are the dudes that I've been like, oh yeah, these guys are doing it. I'm fucking with this, you know? Nice, I'll, I'll have to hit you up separately, man, to get some of those names and check them out. Absolutely, yeah. Oh my gosh. Hey, well, hey man, uh, so we talked about just the art of performing. So what, what about just uh, <clears throat> uh, when you come, your when you put your set together, man, do you have a favorite song that has, has to always be on that performance list? Not at all. I, I try to, uh, growing up in like the DJ culture, I try to make it an adventure, you know what I mean? So it can start out slow, 
build, 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 climax, and then come down slow, or I or I hit climax and I'm there the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So the stage is is definitely where I find my most uh, uh, gratifying venture with rap, man. I love being on stage. So yeah, well, I've seen uh, I've seen you uh, when when you've done sets with DJs. Have you performed with a live band at all? I have, yeah. Royce oh. from uh, Galapagos Four was a live okay. band, and me and uh, the Heavy Twelves, which is Egad's Snakefoot, uh, we did a live show in San Francisco with Billy Woods and uh, oh, Chesky. God. It was so fucking fun, man. It was <laughs> like it was insane, bro. Yeah, and so hey, man, you've uh, lived all over the United States, and uh, mm -hmm. man, you've been around the world and traveled, man. Do you have a favorite city? Uh, that that uh, you love to rock at? Is it just always the hometown in Cali or Philly? I mean, LA and San Diego are probably the best cities to rock for me. You know, like I fuck with both super heavy. Dago and LA are, are like, I don't know. You know how Cali people are, man. We're much different. If you ever lived anywhere in this country, we're different than everybody. You know what I mean? We're more enthusiastic. We're, we're more dreamy and and we vibe pretty fucking hard. So yeah, Dago in LA, that's that's my spots, man. That's awesome, man. <clears throat> well, hey, with that, let, let's get into the uh, the funny portion of the interview, man. I got a little segment I call, what kind of Filipino are you? You ready for ah, some? <laughs> ah, <laughs> okay. All right, here's uh, the first one. This has probably been the first time I've got to ask this question where it, it probably shows some personal conflict, man. What's your favorite? Between Filipino spaghetti or Italian style spaghetti? Uh, it's Italian all the way, bro. I'm half oh, Sicilian, bro. Really? Oh, yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Italian all the way. Yeah, Italian, oh, Italian spaghetti is, it's, it, there's just no comparison to the two, bro. <laughs> okay. Not, not the way that I thought it was going to go. All right. Hey, uh -huh. favorite, favorite Filipino food? Uh, Mungo. Yeah, so Mungo is my favorite, man. I, I'm a big fan of just the, the green beans and yeah. the shrimp and, and all of it. The flavors are my favorite. You put that over rice, it's fucking game over. Yeah, so I'm not a fan of cooking, but do you, do you or your wife, uh, who, who's the cook in the family? I was a chef for a while, man, so yeah, I'm the cook. Yep. Nice. Kick I Filipino, cook. Filipino cuisine? Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Man, I grew up cooking it. Okay. All right, man. I, I'm pretty. Uh, this next question, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty half and half. It's I always get the split response, man. For you, spam or corned beef, and you gotta justify it. Oh, I'd say corned beef, man, because I like to see log on top of corned beef. Man. <laughs> yeah, corned beef for sure. I love spam, but it's nothing like corned beef with the potatoes and on rice with an egg, bro. It's crazy. Okay. Ah, you go with the Libby's or you go with the other Asian brand of corned beef? I'm good with any of it, bro. It doesn't oh, matter. Okay, good. All right, man. Good answer. With that, man, it's going to be awesome. And, uh, man, I just also thank you, too, man. Uh, I've had the opportunity to do a little bit of music with you. Thank you for hopping on. Yeah. Uh, a track I'm still that, uh, working that track out, man. You and uh, Stable Mouth from uh, Hawaii is on that track, man. Yeah. No, oh, no, no rush, man. Thank you for doing uh, for uh, allowing me to be on that. And then uh, we got the, the track you did for Digital Martyrs. Is uh, oh no. Yeah, it should be done in the next month or two. But it's uh, it's right on. yeah, man. It's just been an honor, man, to follow your career, man. And again, man, I'm just always happy to see cats that I really respect and look up to still doing music to this day. And Same again, body, you've been yeah. killing it, bro. You've been killing it. Ah, but I, I don't think nobody uh, has deserved this title of your rapper's favorite rapper any more than you, man. Everybody. Uh -huh. Yeah, with that, man. Hey, what where's the best place to find all your music at, man? Where do you want people going to? I mean, Spotify. You can find all my shit on Spotify. Uh, YouTube. I got a YouTube that I just I neglect it sometimes because real life gets in the way. But Instagram, I'm the most popping on Instagram, so. You can find me on Instagram. I am Mestizo on Instagram. I love it, man. Well, hey, mm. thank you. I, I appreciate your time, man. Is there anybody uh, you want to shout out before we close down this amazing interview? Uh, let me see. Shout out my Tito RJ, Kuya Danny Kim, Stevie Weeby. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Who else? Zach from Hands Made, Dose One, Mediogre. 
Uh, that's about it. Harry James, shout out Harry James, man. One of the best musicians of all time. So that's where it's at, man. Well, I think thanks again, man. I look forward to sharing this, man. I appreciate you letting us do a deep dive into your mind and just talk about where it all started, man, and where you're at now. Absolutely, man. If you're the truth, man. You are the truth and the future, baby. Keep going, nah, man. Forever you a fan. Crushing it. Crushing it. <laughs> crushing it. Hell nah. yeah. All right, buddy. Let's do this okay. together. Teamwork, baby. Take care, man. Yes, sir. Thank <laughs> you.